Now, women are living longer and healthier lives, but once the kids leave home, many struggle with who they are and what to do in their later years. Our next guest wants to turn your midlife crisis into midlife courage. Life coach Charlene Gred joins us now. Good morning to you. Hi, how are you? Really, really good. Nice to have you in the studio. Thank so you. the midlife crisis isn't just an urban myth, is it? No, unfortunately not. You know, it came about in the 60s when uh, women were recommended to go to psychologists because they were reckoning with their own mortality and they were over their productive years, is what they said. So it's kind of a term that's stuck. I personally don't like it. I think it, it just, women go into midlife feeling fearful, they're not embracing the change. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I do need to use it because when I hashtag it, I still get thousands of, of hits, but I prefer words like midlife transition, um, a pause in your life, or a chrysalis mm. kind of stage. It could be the time when, when they finally can breathe for the first time after having children, raising children and getting them out of the house. So what are the signs that you might be spiralling into a midlife crisis? I think it's a lot to do with the feelings. You start feeling lost, confused, sad, overwhelmed, you're asking yourself these questions and you haven't got the answers and you know just that whole grieving perhaps that half of your life is, is perhaps gone and now what are you going to do? Facing your own mortality. Yes. So have you made some major changes to your life in your 50s? Yes I went overseas when I was 50 to Italy with my sister and we did a month over there and when I came home I felt really restless I wanted more of that so I googled midlife, uh, midlife and I came up with a quote that said women die in their 50s but they aren't buried till their 80s. And I thought, wow, if I've got 30 years potentially left, I don't want to be lost in the wilderness. So it actually got me into action gear and I did a life coaching course and I've been traveling ever since, really. It's fantastic. Wow, because 50 is not, as we say, people are living for a longer time. 50 is not old these no, days No, not anymore. All. Not no. like it used to be. No, that's right. So should women in their 40s start preparing for this midlife change? Oh, absolutely. I say from about 35 onwards, you start getting these kind of like nudges, and it's really easy to ignore them. But if you do um, ignore them, they, they don't go away. And then in your 50s, they become like screams, and they're often <laughs> to do with death disease, um, redundancy or divorce. So, you know, listen to those little nudges and pay attention to them and, and get some help if you need to. And act on them. So, yes. so what's the worst thing a woman could do in her 50s, do you think? It, well, if she's feeling unhappy, ignore you know to ignore that and, and feel too um, scared to perhaps go out of their comfort zone. And, and a lot of women feel like they don't deserve to, to put themselves first. They've lost their confidence. Mm. So, you know, go to a coach or go to someone that's going to help walk you through this phase. Because it can be actually a really good time in your life to challenge yourself a little bit. You may have a little bit more time uh, once the children are off living their lives. Yeah, time, time and freedom. And so, yeah, it's a great time to look at what is left. You know, and that's one of the questions women, is, women ask themselves. Is there more out there? What potentially could I be doing now that mm. the kids are leaving home? Travel. Travel. So, <laughs> so as a midlife coach, what is some of the most common advice that you are giving out? Um, it's not so much advice, it's like getting women to listen to those inner promptings. At midlife we tend to turn more inward, you know, the first part of life is like getting married, uh, building a career, earning money, buying your house, and it seems at midlife these questions come up. So getting women to listen to those questions and pay attention to them, and, and sometimes they need help from us to ask bigger questions, to think outside the square and, and to help them that way, mm -hmm. and to be a support for them. I suppose a lot could start looking at their relationships because they've been uh, busy throughout their lives yes. with whatever for work and children that uh, once they're on their own with their partner they can start questioning things there too. Yes that's right relationships and and um, that's one of the big ones and then you've got your children may be leaving home but then you've got your elderly parents so we're mm. kind of like in the sandwich generation and then of course we've got the darling symptoms of menopause to go along with it as well. And then the children seem to come back half the time don't yeah, they? Yeah they always come back. Because <laughs> they can't afford to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. um, so what do you tell your daughters about growing older? Well it's not so much about telling them things it's just being a really positive role model so I did a big event on Friday night for 60 people and my 18 year old was my helper so she videoed me so she heard me saying that this is a great time in your life and, and and they get to see that I'm, you know, actually having a ball as a woman in my 50s, that I'm certainly not feeling like life is over. That's really inspiring stuff. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you.